family. Happy Friday morning. I'm excited because I could hang out with one of my good friends, Lily, today. So this is our Doula 101 webinar. I'm Dr. Andrew Roop, if you're not part of our Thrive family already. Um, I've got the blessing of being a prenatal Webster certified chiropractor. And Lily is not only an amazing doula, helps you know take care of other pregnant moms herself, but she's also been someone involved in our own personal births for these last two. Zeke, I, I, I don't know if our oldest is gonna like never really like you because you weren't there for his birth. <laughs> I don't, we haven't brought that up before, but that might be a future challenge you run into. But I mean, we were like eight hours away in Illinois and we never met you, so I feel like that's fair. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to explain it to him one day. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully he won't hold a grudge. But we're excited because we both care so much about birth. We both care so much about helping people have positive birth experiences. And something that I will be the biggest advocate for and I'll be the biggest cheerleader for is having a doula. Having a doula has been something we've had at each of our three home births. And that's what we wanna to do today is answer some questions on what is a doula? Why might you want one? What aren't they? And how can, like, how does it even work with COVID, right? How does that work with hospital policies? And are you allowed to have a partner with you and a doula? There's so many questions, even just this week as we've been taking care of our, our pregnant um, patients at the office. I, you know, we've mentioned this webinar and they've got even more of good thoughts that's helped us prepare for this. So hopefully we can provide some value for you. This is going to live on for infinity as long as Facebook exists online. So maybe you're catching this recording, but if you're joining us live, if you're here right now, feel free to ask questions. Maybe you've got something you're hoping to hear or hoping to learn. Throw that in the comments right away. I'll kind of try to keep an eye on that as we go. And if that um, is something we can address or help you with, we will definitely do that. Awesome. Sound good? Yeah. So let's jump right into just that question of what is a doula? And I'll give my answer, which is kind of a, uh, a silly way of thinking of it, but I want you to dig into that a little bit more and how you would explain it, because I'm sure that's something you get a lot. Sure. I, I just mentioned this to one of our pregnant moms the other day. I said it's kind of like a pre-filtered, a pre-organized Google search, right? Because there's so many questions, there's so many things that you're going to have to decide during your pregnancy, and you can go to the World Wide Web and find those answers, or at least a million perspectives on them. But do this help you do that in a little bit of a more organized way, in a much more experienced way, where they can filter out some of the craziness and some of the stuff that you can come across. So that's my silly way of explaining it, is they're basically helping you t boil all that information down and answer your questions in a second instead of an hour of looking online. So what would you explain a doula as? Like what is the role that they serve in a birth? Yeah, so um, doulas are non-medical support people. I'm gonna put this down because I love to talk with my hands. So <laughs> first off, I'm Lily Carter. You can find us at birthbabies.com. Golden Lotus Doula Services um, is our company. So what a doula is, is a physical, informational, emotional support person. Um, what we're not is we're not a part of the medical team. So we are purely an advocate and support person for you and your partner through pregnancy, birth, and postpartum. Um, I love to compare it to if you go to the airport for the first time by yourself and you've never traveled before, or maybe you've traveled before and, you know, had whatever experience you had versus going to the airport with somebody who's very well traveled and knows their way around. At the end of the day, you're going to have, you know, the same result. You'll get where you're going to go. Um, but the difference between those two experiences if you know a flight gets delayed or canceled or your luggage gets lost or you need to navigate the airport a, in a different way is you know totally different and um, a different experience based on how stressful it can be that really is so. a good analogy because that's something that you'll hear from people like I don't care what what happens at birth or I don't have a birth plan I just you know you want a healthy baby healthy mom if that happens then all is well and yes in a way I guess but I would probably disagree with that because that experience, you're, um, you're leaving feeling empowered or leaving feeling traumatized makes such an impact, not just on the physical journey and healing of mom and baby afterwards, but on their emotional state. So it really is the journey and it really is that experience that you go through. It's not just, okay, what's the end result and everything's fine. It's no, those, that in between part matters a ton. So that is a good right. way of thinking of it. Yeah, I think of it kind of like a custom moment by moment support too. Like our support, is going to change depending on what your birth is looking like. Like our, if we're at a home birth and we transfer to the hospital, if we have a home birth and we have 
a stubborn asynclitic baby that's stalling out your labor. Like your doula is or should be trained to assess what is going on as far as combining information from their experience and what your provider is saying and how you're handling labor and make you have the most calm, comfortable experience possible and also keep your labor progressing if possible. Yeah, it really is so true. It's just something that's going to, they're going to adapt and change with the situation. If they've got a really on top of it partner or spouse that is hands-on involved, their role might be more so keeping the spouse supported and keeping them, you know, what they need and, and guiding mom with stuff and maybe giving tips. Maybe spouse is freaked out and maybe partner doesn't know what to do. They are going to probably take charge a little bit more in that situation and, and guide um, hands-on in a sense, as opposed to what it, it might look like otherwise. So that's, they're, they're fluid, they're flexible, because that's how birth goes. You never know what it's going to be like. Um, what's, so how might it be different than a nurse, than how, like, you know, someone might say, oh, I, my, my partner or my spouse does um, a really good job of supporting me. I know they're going to be on top of it. I don't really need a doula. And it'll be the first example of that. Like, I feel like I'm a pretty weird bird, birth nerd. Like, I love this stuff. We've been involved. I was leading the charge for all of our, our births. But even, like I said, in all of ours, we wanted and loved having a doula present. So we're a good example of, you know, that serving a role even with an involved spouse. Um, but what would, your, what would you say to that? Like, oh, the nurse will help. The, the spouse will help. I don't need a doula. Yeah. So we um, never replace a spouse or a partner. We love to say, like, doulas are your left hand, your partner is your right. So your partner has been great at supporting you through every emotional challenge through your entire relationship, which means they are really awesome emotional support during labor. Um, but what I would say is your partner also deserves support too, and we can lead them through labor as far as what's normal, what's not, what to expect, and how to properly support you as well. So it's not just your experience, it's also your partners and making sure that they are calm and know what to expect but also giving them suggestions on how to support you yeah. and to be able to you know, provide you with the knowledgeable support that comes from years of experience of attending birth. Um, I wish, I always joke, I wish I could like dump my brain into my clients or into their partners um, because there's just so much that comes with knowing the nuances of labor. So yeah. even if your partner is an awesome emotional support person and knows a ton about birth, um, like Andrew, there is going to be a certain element that comes in whenever you bring in just experience experience yeah. of going to births. I've been at three births. You've been in a lot more than that. And actually, <laughs> well, I haven't congratulated you in person, but Lily just celebrated a big birth milestone. How many births did you just see? So I celebrated 100 last month, so I'm at 102 now. That's amazing. So, yeah. So absolutely. that's a lot, a lot of experience. Even if you're on your second, third kid and you're like, oh, I know how this is going to go. You know, I've been down this road before. Second or third is a lot different than 100 and second or 100 and third. Yeah. So that experience really is, is valuable. Doulas have probably forgotten more about how birth goes than we will ever know. So Good, good stuff there. And I really do think people, this is more so maybe a first time birth um, example, but you might not know what that process or that experience is gonna be like, but there's a lot of time before you're going to the midwife center or the hospital or before you're calling your home birth midwife. There's a lot of questions until then, like, do I go, do I not go? That's when you are texting and talking to your doula all the time. And even when you're there, when you're at the hospital, you might think, oh, okay, I'm here, I'm safe, like they've gotten me from here. You don't have a nurse by your side the entire time. They're in and out, you know, as needed. But otherwise, it's just you. It's you and, and partner and spouse, and that's scary for a lot of people. So doulas are amazing at calming those fears and being a steady resource so that you're not, you know, heading into that unknown by yourself. Um, we should probably answer that question of can doulas even practice right now? Can doulas be in the hospital and and part of that answer is going to include what you guys just were working hard at within the last what two weeks ago now yeah about within the last weeks. couple weeks they just yeah you may be and this might be my paraphrasing of the story but your questioning and nudging and emails were falling on deaf ears um for certain maybe hospital admin or whatnot up until a point where all right we'll, we'll get a little petition going and an hour or two later with several hundred signatures all of a sudden the emails and the calls and the correspondences started getting answered. Um, and so that was a really powerful thing, seeing how you kind of took charge on uh, making that happen. So at least in that case, doulas are allowed now, but give us a, a perspective of what does the Western PA Pittsburgh area look like 
Are doulas allowed everywhere? Is it Does it vary? What's going on? Yeah, so um, great question. We have a lot of unknowns right now, obviously, with the coronavirus, but we're trying to sort it out, which um, I feel really you know, blessed to be a part of a community that is learning and changing their policies as we learn more. So yeah. UPMC is um, allowing doulas back and has been extremely flexible through the pandemic. Um, and then the Midwife Center is allowing doulas. AHN is now allowing doulas because of the petition. Um, and then the only two that are not right now are St. Clair and Swickley. Um, and of course, home birth, you can have du doulas as well. So how the process is looking is there's just a short questionnaire. Um, and then you usually are asking questions, ask questions about symptoms at the check-in desk. And then you get a badge um, for your doula. So the difference before was you were only allowed one support person. So you had to choose between your partner or your doula. And knowing that doulas can provide better birth outcomes, that was really hard on a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so now doulas are not really like counted in that count. So you get to have your partner and then you get to have your doula at those hospitals that we named. Yeah, we were talking about that with one of our pregnant moms just last night though and she she brought that up and joked that if i had to make that choice i would probably choose my doula over my spouse <laughs> um but we'll leave that between you right. and, and the spouse to, to sort out but yeah that, that really is awesome news that um we're able to you know navigate the uncertainty that everyone's been dealing with and have the support that moms need that our, our pregnant patients need during birth so that they're not going that alone or going that with a, a partner and not knowing what you're going to face. So I was excited to hear that news and appreciate all that you've been doing to make that happen. Um, let's get into some of the, the details of what does that look like during labor? Let's give some examples of during the specific birth process, what might a doula be doing? What might their um, labor coping mechanisms look like? Yeah, so your doula's job, I basically describe as um, three things. So they're trying to keep you as calm as... As calm as possible, as, as, sorry, um, keep you as calm as possible, as comfortable as possible, and your labor moving as quickly as possible. So those things are kind of our overarching goals. Um, comfort measures can look like anything from hip squeezes or counter pressure on the client's back or pelvis um, to assist with helping baby move down and also relieving some of the um, intensity that people feel in their back during labor. We also have different tools that we use, like a comb in the hand or a TENS unit on your back, which work with pain gate theory um, and kind of interrupt those nerve endings that are sending pain messages to your brain. Um, and we also have different positioning strategies, whether it be techniques like spinning babies, which is an in-depth look at um, making sure that baby's positioning is proper and your positioning with your pelvis is proper in order to make your birth as smooth and as fast as possible. Or it can be simply like adding a birth ball or suggesting a position change on a birth ball um, so that we can, you know, have access to your lower back for something like a hip squeeze or trying to maneuver into the tub or into the shower. So I personally love water as a coping tool um, or a comfort measure, I think putting someone on a birth ball in the shower and letting the water hit their back or um, having access to a birth tub is really awesome. Yeah. And I know that Laura loves the tubs in labor too. So yeah, that's where she's always birthed and, and wanted to push. So all of our three births have been water births. And some of what you just mentioned, really all of it, has been used in, in the two births that you've been a part of for us. This most recent one, when you were serving in that doula role, Laura never, you know, even having gone through a few home births, She'd never done that that comb approach, but mm -hmm. she gravitated to that right away, and she had a comb in her hand. She was squeezing that, um, and that added a little bit of pressure that helped take her mind off of the pressure she was feeling elsewhere. So that was a big help. And Zion's birth is a is a whole other story. You look up the the birth blog we've shared before on that if you want to get into the details. But that's one that um, you know we hear so much in the home birth world of oh I can't I couldn't have ever had a home birth because I ended up needing a C section or something like that. We had the opposite experience. We had 
a, a birth that ended in an amazing home birth. But if we were in the hospital, we probably would have ended in a C-section because of some of the things that she ran into and some of the stalling and ebbing and flowing of, of labor. But one of the techniques and the positions that Lily had recommended um, when she was there as a midwife assistant ended up being the jump start that got that stubborn Mr. Zion to turn and rotate and, and really engage in the pelvis and finally enter the world shortly after that. So it's, it's been a huge, huge help in our own personal births, which you know we were huge advocates of, of do this before that, but having lived it uh, even more so. So that, that all is, is valuable. And it's helpful having such a wide variety in a, in a large bag of, of tools because after Zeke's birth, our first, we thought we had it done. Like, okay, Laura loved laboring on her hands and knees. That counter pressure right on the low back made everything better for her. So second birth, starting to amp up like, okay, you know, she's kind of on her hands and knees and swaying, counter pressure, hated it. I mean, it was the worst thing. She's like, nope, that's not it. And so we quickly went to, wait a minute, this is what we thought we did during labor, what now? But thankfully we did have a birth team and a birth support system that were able to say, all right, well, let's try this, let's try that. Let's, you know, let's do this a different way. Um, otherwise, we, who knows what would have happened. So you never know what you're gonna run into, which is why you want that 103, 102 births worth of experience guiding you along the way. Um, some other things we should talk about. That it's not just a birth support that a doula offers. There's way more that we could go into as far as postpartum doula work, right? Maybe they're doing overnight stays or support, you know, helping you adjust to life with a newborn. Um, but let's talk about just the birth doula role. There's prenatal visits, there's a little bit of postpartum stuff. So kind of what's, what's someone expecting when they, um, you know, are working with you guys? Yeah, so um, given a normal circumstance, like unless somebody hires us at the final hour, um, we love to do two prenatal visits with our clients. So that is going through all of the positioning techniques, breathing techniques, um, birth planning or birth preferences, different options that you might have, helping you build your care team, helping you transfer care if that's something you, that you wanted to do, um, giving you suggestions on things like chiropractic or trying to um, find a pediatric or a pediatrician. So we are trying to navigate your entire pregnancy with you and really provide support. Um, a lot of people need emotional support and especially during this time right now with the world the way it is, that support for things like um, prenatal anxiety and you know being that partner with you through your pregnancy. So two prenatal visits typically um, and then obviously you know support for your birth. So we come in whenever you feel like um, labor is consistent and a little bit more difficult than you want to do on your own. So we don't have a hard and fast rule of like, oh, you must be six centimeters, your contractions must be five minutes apart. Um, so we come whenever you feel ready for us. And then we're there through your entire birth. And then one to two hour, hours postpartum, make sure that breastfeeding is going well, any repairs are complete, your placenta has been delivered. Um, and then everybody's tucked in, you're ready to spend some time as a family. We also do a postpartum visit, about four to five days postpartum, check in and see how you guys are doing, how everybody's healing, um, talk to you about sleeping and eating, nourishing you and the baby. So we check in, we talk about any questions that you had about the birth at that point as well. Um, and it's really like a nice touch point just to check in with our families as that, well. That debriefing is, is important it's powerful. Um, you know, you doing that at a handful of days postpartum is a good thing. You probably should re unpackage it a handful of months as well as you kind of process and work through that experience um, but yeah there's so much support that goes into it and there's even some other services that they do that you could reach out to Lily or the Golden Lotus team about like birth photography is mm -hmm. something that they've added on and that you know she was a part of and doing for our last birth placenta encapsulation something she's done for the last two births for us now if eating your placenta sounds really weird to you that's what it sounded like to me too the first time I heard it. <laughs> sounded many, like many, that many, to me many, too. <laughs> many minutes ago. But there's so many benefits to hormone regulation and, and coming back to a um, a calm point afterwards. We'll save that for another webinar, or you can ask them directly. They got all the the deets on that. Um, but yeah, there's so much support that goes into it. And listen, we if if you know us, if you're familiar with Thrive, you know how important we think that prenatal chiropractic care is. Right, Webster certified prenatal care is something that I think every pregnant person deserves to have, right? Your body is going through so many changes, your center of gravity is shifting, relaxing is loosening all these hormones in your body. 
it's to help you just survive pregnancy, deal with all the aches and pains and challenges that you're going to run into, but it's also to help prepare your body for an awesome birth, right? If your pelvis is balanced and aligned, if there's no restrictions and tensions within the round ligaments and the psoas and those other soft tissues, chances are you're going to have a much, much better experience. But even with all of that, even with as much as we're passionate about that, the role a doula serves is so powerful as well because the thing I'll, I'll tell our pregnant patients here is as much as the physical preparation is a big deal, this headspace one, your, your mental preparation, the information you're feeding yourself is just as significant. So if you want a really positive birth experience, you're not going to do it by accident. You're not going to stumble into it. Um, just like anything else in life, right? You don't stumble into being super healthy. You don't accidentally have a really good, healthy relationship with your partner. It takes work, but it is so, so worth it. Um, so that's why we, we love working with partners like this. That's why we do stuff like any, any person who's coming from Golden Lotus or anyone, you know, even joining us on this webinar here today, we'll, we'll give you a gift certificate uh, to take $50 off of that initial exam and, and make sure that we make it as easy as possible for you to get the care that you need. Um, but it's a, it's a true one plus one equals 11 sort of relationship when you're combining these positive factors and positive things. Um, I was gonna ask about you know, each of us can share some of our favorite birth resources. Is there anything else you wanted to share? Anything else on your mind before we do that? Um, I think that one of the biggest things we should cover is maybe like what to look for when you're picking a doula. Yeah, um, that's worthwhile. Yeah, so just the biggest thing that I think that makes us stand out is everybody gets a primary and a secondary. Um, so no matter who you're choosing for your doula, make sure that they have good solid backup. Um, make sure that you are meeting that backup or at least having some kind of Zoom call um, or going to coffee with them. You want to be familiar with who might be at your birth, right? Yeah. Um, also, talk to your doula about their experience. Talk to them not only about the favorite births they've been at, talk to them about the hardest births they've been at. How are they handling um, tough situations? How have they helped their clients through those tough situations? Um, not every birth is a butter birth, which is our, like, you know, joke for a super smooth and clean and easy births. Um, so you really learn your doula's skill set whenever you kind of dig into those harder stories. Um, when you have the Zion births. Yeah, when you smooth. have the Zion births. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of cool that Andrew and I have had both um, a challenging birth together with Laura and also a butter birth with Laura yeah. together. So Mavericks was pretty smooth. Yeah. Pretty fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that really is so, so key. Like this is something that I always encourage people to have a, maybe, maybe not face-to-face -face these days, but ideally face-to-face -face or at least phone call conversation with your doula because it's not something you can just look at the resume and look at the experience. You need to have a personality mesh with this person. You need to have a personality mesh because they are going to be in a vulnerable experience with you, right? Birth is a open, vulnerable, intimate time and you don't want someone who just even if they're an awesome person, they just rub you the wrong way. That's not the friction that you want and you need at a birth. And that's why it's cool that you know, you've got the team of multiple people at Golden Lotus and you guys are all very different personality right. wise, right? Mm -hmm. Some might love Lily, some might think Lily's super annoying and they like Lisa and Michaela <laughs> bit. And so you've got options and you've got um, different people that might connect with uh, you personality wise better than others. So you want to have a nice, comfortable relationship with, which only is gonna come from meeting them and yeah. having that conversation. So that's, that's a good point. Um, birth resources are some of our favorites. You probably heard before his birth partner and Mama Natural's Guide to Birth and Pregnancy. Um, those are the ones that we're recommending here all day, every day, especially birth partner. That's been our favorite. That's the one I've read three times now for each of our three babies. Anything you'd add, anything that, um, do you like those ones like others? Yeah, I love the birth partner. I think it's great. I think everybody that is going to be present in the room should read that. Um, I love, I mean, I'm biased because I'm a hypnobirthing practitioner, but I love the hypnobirthing book, um, The Mongan Method. And I feel like there are just so many like life skills to yeah. being able to relax yourself in tense moments. Um, so even if you aren't hypnobirthing, it is such a great addition to your library whenever you're prepping for your birth. Yeah. Um, and then also I would say something I recommend to a lot of my clients besides prenatal chiropractic is um, pelvic floor physical therapy, especially yeah. if you're somebody that does a lot of like weightlifting or horseback riding or something. There's so many little muscles that could be held so tight and you don't realize it, but um, it can make 
baby's descent through the pelvis very difficult. So along with the chiropractic um, and the relaxant that your body's releasing, all these things are working together and we can hopefully get you a really great birth experience with the proper support. Yeah, that's another one that, you know, just like we said, uh, prenatal chiropractic should be the standard of care for pregnancy. That should be too. Both pregnancy and postpartum recovery, um, you should have pelvic floor, you know, core, female-focused physical therapy specialist because there's a lot that your body's going through in that time. And um, a lot of the normal experiences like urinary incontinence or, or pain or pelvic issues are definitely not normal. They're way too common, um, but they shouldn't be there. So that's a good one. Right. And if you guys need a referral for that, re feel free to reach out to either yeah. of us. We all have our favorite people in the Pittsburgh area. Yeah, we got some good ones. All right, well, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully this was valuable for you guys. Um, like I said, we'll make sure that it lives on, make sure that you, know, you can find it on our page or the Golden Lotus one and reach out to them um, and set up something with Lily or one of their other doulas. Um, whether it is the placenta or doula or postpartum work or the hypnobirthing classes, they've got so many ways to support you during your pregnancy, birth, postpartum journey. So they're an awesome resource. Yeah, it was so nice hanging out with you guys. Thanks, friend. See Thanks. you later. See ya.